Welcome back. In this video, we're going to take a look at angle relationships. Vertical angles are two angles that are formed by intersecting lines. So if we simply have two lines that intersect. Okay, so we have lines A and B here, and these two lines meet. Well, the vertical angles, the angles opposite of each other, are always going to be congruent. And of course, we denote that by the tick marks. Okay. Parallel lines are two lines that lie in the same plane and never intersect. Those two will have the same slope within that plane. So in the diagram here below, I have two lines, lines A and B, and they appear to be somewhat parallel. I have shown that A is parallel to B, so then we know that those two lines are parallel. My third line, line C here, is the transversal. This is the line that is cutting these two parallel lines. Okay, It's a line which will intersect two other lines, or a, more than two, but usually two, and usually two parallel lines. In reviewing our geometry, our, our angle relationships, alternate interior angles, meaning alternating sides of the transversal, and interior means the interior region. So the area in between the two parallel lines is the interior region, and the area outside, if you will, the two parallel lines is the exterior region. So alternate, alternate interior angles are on opposite sides of the transversal and in the interior region. So our alternate interior angles might be angle 4 and angle 6 and angle 5 and angle 3 and when we have parallel lines when we have parallel lines, the alternate interior angles will be congruent. We'd say angle 4 is congruent to angle 6, and angle 5 is congruent to angle 3. And we might denote that by using tick marks. The alternate exterior angles, same situation, opposite sides of the transversal, and in the exterior region. And if we have parallel lines, those two angles will also be congruent. They're not always congruent, only when the lines are parallel. So angle 1 is congruent to angle 7, and angle 8 is congruent to angle 2, and that's because lines A and B are parallel. Corresponding angles, we have a lot of corresponding angles. Um, I didn't leave myself much room here, but corresponding, I look at those as like every other angle on the same side of the transversal. So corresponding angles might be angles 1 and 5. Corresponding angles might be our 4 and 8. Corresponding angles 2 and 6 and corresponding angles 3 and 7. I look at that as every other angle. 1, skip 4, 5. 4, skip 5, 8. Okay, 2, skip 3, 6. 3, skip 6, 7. And the corresponding angles are congruent. Angle 3 is going to be congruent to angle 7. And then we also have interior angles on the same side of the transversal. Okay, so that must be the interior region and on the same side. So interior angles on the same side of the transversal would be 3 and 6 and 4 and 5. Exterior angles on the same side of the transversal, 2 and 7 and... 1 and 8. And when lines are parallel here, these are supplements. 
okay, their sum equals 180 degrees. Triangles, review of triangles. Triangles are comprised of three sides and three angles. Okay. And the sum of the interior angles will always equal 180 degrees. Okay. So here is a triangle ABC, and we probably denote that ABC. We could name it BCA, CBA, um, all the same triangle. The order doesn't particularly matter in the naming of it. Order will, will matter in other things. When we look at correspondence or we compare two triangles, the order will matter. But just naming it to start with doesn't really matter. And we can classify triangles by sides and by their angles. A scalene triangle classified by sides, no two sides are the same or congruent. And I'm going to use the congruent symbol there. Isosceles triangle, an isosceles triangle, at least two sides are congruent. And an equilateral triangle, all sides are congruent. So an equilateral triangle is also isosceles. And we can also classify a triangle by its angles. An acute angle or an acute triangle, all angles are less than 90 degrees. Okay, or each angle is less than 90 degrees. A right triangle has one right angle. Okay, and in an obtuse triangle, one angle is greater than 90 degrees. In an equilateral triangle, oops, equiangular triangle, because we're classifying by angles, equiangular, all the angles are congruent. And as it turns out, yes, an equiangular triangle is also equilateral. But it depends on how we're classifying it. So there is a introduction to angle relationships. For much of, many of you, that's probably a review and also a review of triangles. And we will see you in class.